Hello YouTube, it's Lucas Snow here at Aesthetics Interactive Studios and in this Blender tutorial I will be showing you how to use the Graph Editor. For those who do not know what the Graph Editor is, the Graph Editor is a very powerful tool for use of animation. It can be used to create shaky camera effects for your camera or it can create a looping, never ending animation for certain objects this is extremely useful for objects like helicopter blades as I showed you in the last video of how to parent helicopter blades to a body oh excuse me I had a belch <laughs> mm. <coughs> right look in this video I will be showing you how to use the graph editor for two things or should I, or should I make three I want one that focuses on a looping helicopter rotation blade. I will also have one for this cube to go left and right as the helicopter blades are rotating. And I am going to give this camera a shaky camera effect. So, without further ado, let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is check our frame rate. Our frame rate is 24 frames per second. That is the frame rate used by North America. Britain uses 25 frames per second. However, for the circumstances of this video to make keep things at even, we are going to keep it at 24 frames per second. Not because Americans are awesome, that, well, that depends on your definition or your preferences. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Okay, first things first, what we're going to do is we're going to position our Q to one corner of the grid. To do that, we're going to press the G key, and we're going to press the Z key, and we're going to press 2. Oh, no, not 2, I'm sorry, 1. I thought the Q was below the grid, but it was actually in between. What we're going to do now is we're going to press G and Y and we're going to type in minus 7. And as you can see, the cube is now over to the left. We're going to add a keyframe to this in a minute. What we're going to do is we're going to put our cursor at our cube. To do that, just, type, just press the space key and type in snap cursor or just type in SNA it will come up for you and you got snap cursor to select it and that is what we are going to do as you can see now that circle that we had in the middle of the grid has now moved over to the center of our cube and we are going to add in a cylinder just like in the last episode we're going to add in the cylinder we're going to drag that up by holding down the left mouse button the right mouse button selects objects to let and use the left mouse button on the arrows or rings or squares to scale, rotate and all that stuff. We're going to scale this actually so we make it a little small smaller. Press the S key to scale it like so and we're just going to move that down. Just like in the other video we're going to snap the cursor to that again. I'll just press space and it generally does show the last command you used in the space key is the always the one that pops up and that's handy because we used th this cursor last so we're going to do the same now we're going to go into edit mode and we're going to add in a cube so add cube there we go and like in the other video we're going to scale this down like so here's why like that and then we're gonna S and X like so. Now we're just gonna drag that up a bit nicely, does it? That'll do. Well, I'm gonna use one blade because this is just a demonstration, it's not any major production. If you was to make a major production, I would recommend something a lot more powerful than the computer I'm using. Okay, press the tab key to exit your edit mode. Now we're going to have to parent this object. 
To power in an object, just like in the last video, we're going to hold down the left shift key and we're going to select the box. And we're going to press Control P. And we're going to set parent to object. And now if we move our cube, as you can see, our little spinny thing on top is going to move with the cube. And that is what we want. The reason we want that is because whilst this cube is going back and forwards and forwards, this is going to keep moving. But before we get started with that, we're going to animate our cube. And we're going to have it move back and forward in 2 seconds. What is 2 seconds in 24 frames per second? That is 48 frames per second. So we are going to go all the way over to about here. Oop, 49. Just press the left arrow key. And you just move back one. <coughs> so we're going to press I. And insert a keyframe in terms of location. Like so. I forgot I was meant to do that at the beginning. There is another way you can do that as well. You can just come into your object section here. And you can just right click here and just go insert keyframe. Well we need to go to 24 frames per second now. And we're going to have to move this cube over to the other side. To do that we are going to come over here. And get rid of that minus and press enter. And then we're just going to insert a keyframe, like so. So now, if I click back on that and press this play button here, you can see our cube moves within two seconds. What comes next is we need to make this rotate. If it's a helicopter blade, obviously that rotates very quickly. But we don't want this to rotate very quickly. We want to be able to see it rotate. So we're going to have this at least spin in a 360 degrees in eight, in 10 frames. Or maybe 12. Yeah, 12 frames. Okay. So first thing we're going to do, because it's going to be rotating on the Z axis. As you can see, if I click down here, you can see that blue ring. And our rotation is here. It is important to always right click on rotation in this section. So it's on zero. And we're going to insert a keyframe there at zero. We're going to move over to 12 frames per second. And we're going to have to turn the set axis into 360 degrees. So we're going to have to just hold down the left mouse button. And just drag it all the way till you get to about 360. Or you can type it in if you wanted to. I'm I'm doing it this way so I can get a... Because sometimes when I do type it in it just doesn't happen for me sometimes. So I like to play it safe. Right click on that and then insert keyframe. And now if we play now... I can see it does spin, but it's not continuously spinning. The reason that is not continuously spinning is because we have not set it in our graph editor. And that is what this tutorial is all about, using the graph editor. So we got our sections here, our animation on our cube and that. And we're going to have both of these looping. So what we're going to do is we're just going to click here and drag this up. And we're going to click on this little tab here. And as you can see, we've got this thing called Graph Editor. Now, I know the Graph Editor from the looks here looks a bit complicated. But it's, it's quite simple once you understand it and it is very helpful and very important for such things take this cube for example if i go back to the timeline and i play you can see that it slows it slowly moves as you can see and then it slows down at the ends and gets its speed in between the frames this is because in the graph editor 
you can see there are a curve. What this curve means is it slows, it starts slowly and then it moves upwards and that's the speed that it goes and then it slows down here. Then it speeds up again here and then it slows to a stop which is why it's a flat line. Kind of like a heartbeat in a hospital. That is so dark. <clears throat> but we want this to continuously move back and forward. To do this, we go to channel and you go to extrapolation mode. And here we got got uh, make cyclic. If I click there, as you can see, it's kind of like an audio wave. Now, if I go down to here and back to timeline, and then press play, as you can see, the cube is moving in a loop. And it slows in and out all the time. But the helicopter blades are not spinning. So we got to do the same. So if we click on our rotor blades, go back to our graph editor and do the same thing. We go to our channel, extrapolation mode and make cycle. Go back to here, to our timeline and press play. As you can see, it spins. But the problem is, if you look at the blade, it kind of looks like it's getting stopped by something or hitting something. The reason it's doing that is because, like the cube, it is curved to slow in and slow out. And that is a problem. To change that, you go back into your graph editor, and then you go to key, and then you go to interpolation mode. And as you can see, we have all of this, even th that you can select. As a helicopter blade that is continuously rotating at the same speed, you have to select linear. And if you can see from the linear, if we spin it now, you can see the blades are now rotating at a steady and continuous speed. As I said earlier, the power of the graph editor is very good, very important. They use this for certain things. For if a continuous scene where a car is driving, they would generally use a linear for the wheels because if you're going at a steady speed, you ain't going to see a slowdown. Now, I did say I was going to do a shaky camera effect. The best way to do a shaky camera effect is if we just go and click on our camera. Right click your camera. Um, we are going to come... If you press this... Well, let's just say this. If you press the zero key in your number pad, it puts you into your camera view. That is what we need to do. But first we need to position our camera. You could use the same ways as you do with moving objects. But if you want a position, you can do it many ways. If I go in like this, and then press the N key, I can go and click here, which says lock camera to view. That means that what my when I move my scene, like so, you can see that my camera moves with it. You could do it like that, but I'm going to deselect that for now. There's other ways you can do it, like if I was put it here, you can press Control Alt Zero. And that also puts your camera to where you are facing. Extremely handy. So, if you can see our scene, if we play, you can see our object moving. What we are going to do 
is we're going to animate our camera. It's the same as animating our object. You either can press the I key and insert a keyframe on any of these or right click on this. But because of all this complication of numbers here, we are just going to use the I key and we're going to on location. Like so. Now, we are going to make this entire scene go to at least 96 frames per second or 96 frames so it plays at about one two three four seconds this is a four second long video but we're going to also change the our end to 96 and now we are going to move our camera by holding by pressing the g key the y key and we're just going to move it like so right there and we're going to press i and location so we got this movement our camera is also linear we're well, not linear but it's it's got a curve so it's also slow in slow out slow in slow out is a principal term for animation it is written up in um, a book from Disney Studios. It was written by Frank Thomas and Ollie Johnston. It's called The Illusion of Life, Disney Animation. They give you the 12 principles of animation. I will make a video on this 12 principle of animations in the near future to get help animators have a better understanding. But for now, if I press play, you can see our camera moving. But the camera isn't shaking. To shake our camera, we are going to go back into the graph editor. So if we go into the graph editor now, this is our camera shot. You can see this curve, which is the slow in, slow out, or ease in, ease out. <laughs> to make this shake, we're going to have to go down to our location here. But that, even that don't work. Reasons being because to make your camera shake, you need rotation. To get a rotation, we are going to have to go back into our timeline. Go back to the first frame. Press the I. And go to location, rotation and scale. Then we're going to go back to 96. And we're going to do the same for here. Like so. Now, if we go back into our graph editor, we now have this. And we got our, all our stuff. Let's go on to our X first. As you can see, because we got our keys, okay, we're gonna start with the X axis first. So we've got our X axis is selected it doesn't look like it's selected on my screen but that is because of my user interface color scheme but it is selected if I press the N key here we have our active F curve which is this and we got what it says here best here which is that ease in ease out principle of animation Let me have a bit of a coke. <clears throat> yeah, my cat is meowing. <laughs> right. To give us start preparing a shaky camera effect on our graph editor, we are going to click here on modifiers. That's if you have pressed the N key. You click here, and you can go to your modifier. And we are going to add noise. Because I added a noise, Watch what happens if I go back to our timeline and play. But look at that. That is a big wog. It's like an earthquake is going on. It's easily fixable. To fix it, you just have to play around with our modifiers. We're going to say I'm going to have my strength at 20. And now, if I press Shift A, or not Shift A, sorry. I forgot the hotkey for that. Oh, Alt A. 
I press Alt A, you can see it's a bit more, not as crazy, which is what we want. We don't want it too crazy. Now we have, let me just bring this out so you can see what we've got. So the scale of our movement is at 20. We're going to need to turn the strength down. I'm going to turn our strength down to about 0 0.5. I know if I press Alt A, as you can see, it's not as shaky anymore. But we're now we're going to have to do the same for the Y and Z. I will speed this up so it doesn't take long. So let's get cracking. <laughs> okay, I think I have got it now. So if I bring this back down so you can get a better look. And we're just going to press, we're just going to scroll, we're seeing in a bit. I have gave it a slight movement on the camera. As you can see, it's kind of going a bit up and down-ish. That is a shaky camera effect. It's not the best camera effect. It still, it does require a lot of tweaking in the graph editor. However, you can see the camera is moving and it doesn't didn't really take a lot to do it. You didn't have to go and do it manually. All you do is add in a noise modifier in your graph editor. I will show you again where you can find it. If I go and bring that back up and then click on this tab here and go into graph editor. You generally would see your graph like this. You press the N key to open your F curves or your viewpoint or your properties whatever you like to call it and you can go to your modifiers here and then you can just click on add modifiers and you can just click on noise and that noise allows you to create a shaky camera effect <laughs> 